All right, family. So if you have your Bibles, as always, we want you to turn with us. Uh, turn with us to 2 Kings chapter number 20. 2 Kings chapter number 20. And we're going to start at, uh, let's see here. We'll start at verse number 21. Now, you know what? We'll start at verse 20. 2 Kings chapter number 20. We'll start at verse 1. And we'll stay right there because I believe this is where God wants us to be this morning. Again, at 2 Kings chapter number 20, starting at verse number 21. Here's what, I'm sorry, verse 20, sorry. Here's what the Bible says. Are you there? It says, sometime later, Hezekiah became deadly sick. The prophet's son, I'm sorry, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, paid him a visit and said, put your affairs in order. You're about to die. You haven't long to live. Hezekiah turned from Isaiah and faced God, praying, remember, O God, who I am, what I've done. I've lived an honest life before you. My heart's been true and steady. I've lived to please you, lived for your approval. And then the tears flow. Hezekiah wept. Verse number four. Isaiah, leaving, was not halfway across the courtyard before the word of the Lord of God stopped him and said, go back and tell Hezekiah, prince of my people, God's word, Hezekiah, from the God of your ancestor David, I've listened to your prayers and I've obeyed, I observed your tears. I'm going to heal you. In three days, you will walk on your own legs in the temple of God. I just added 15 years to your life. I'm saving you from the king of Ezra. And I'm covering this city with my shield. For my sake and for my servant David's sake. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Family, in our time together, I want to teach from the subject topic. And I want you to get yourself ready for this. Because if you're not ready for it, you won't receive it the way I got it. I want to teach from the subject topic, clean out your house. Clean out your house. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. God, thank you, God, for your people that are logged in this morning. Thank you, God, for every viewer, every person that is watching this feed right now. And I pray, God, that you meet them at the point of their need today. Lord God, only you know what your people need. Only you know what we're going through. Only you fully comprehend the extent of our experiences. So, Father, I pray this morning that as I unpack this word, anoint my lips of clay, let no flesh get glory. But, Father, I pray that as I speak your word, let your people be edified. Let the enemy be horrified, but most importantly, let you be glorified. In Jesus' precious and mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Clean out your house. Now, family, many of you know that now that the summer has come to an end and we have started the fall season, so many people are getting back to their normal routines and activities of life. During this time of year, as things start to shift back, many people are adjusting to new jobs and new careers. Many people are adjusting to launching and starting a brand new business. Many people are adjusting to uh, having new property and living in new homes. Many people are uh, adjusting their children going back to school. Many people are making life changes and so many other things right now during this critical season and time. 
In fact, for me and my family, this time of the year is what we call a big cleanup time. Now what I mean by a big cleanup is we take the time to do some cleaning up around the house. So yesterday, while many of you were at the mall, I hope, it's a beautiful day yesterday, while you were all shopping and buying all your early Christmas gifts, I hope, my family and I, we were at home cleaning up the house thoroughly, top to bottom. And it's not that we don't clean up throughout the year any other time. It's just that this time of the year that we take the cleanup is equivalent to what you will call a spring cleaning, but it's only we're doing it in the fall. So it's a deep cleaning that we do. We go everywhere in the house and clean up everything from every corner, every crevice. We get that, 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 that squeaky clean feeling going on in our homes. And family, I want you to know that during that process, there are two things that are very intriguing to me during that process. There's something that's very interesting to me, to me that when I, when we're, while we're doing it, I discover and it always baffles me. And the first thing is, I realize that for some weird reason, we have accumulated so much useless, unnecessary things that are like almost garbage. It, it, it's stuff we just accumulate and I'm not even sure what's happening or why it's there. I'm also surprised at how, at how much waste and dust that we uncover in places and spaces that we never even knew were there. We find us in places and crevices that I'm not even sure how did dust get there. Did anybody ever do that? Like you just, you find stuff someplace and you try to say to yourself, well, how did that get there? I, I, when did it get there? How did it get there? And we, we ask ourselves all these questions. And I want you to understand something this morning, family, that as I began to process that yesterday, throughout my entire day that we spent, turning over every nook and crevice in the house. While I was doing that, I began to think about what we were doing that was a visual parallel to so many people's lives. What we were doing in our house in that moment was a visual representation of what often happens in so many of our lives. It is, stay with me. What I mean by that is, throughout our life's journey, we accumulate so many things that are garbage. We accumulate so many things that are useless. Jesus. We accumulate so many things that are unnecessary in our lives. Mm -hmm. And these things that are useless, these things that are unnecessary, these things that are garbage, begin to create residue that's called dust. And the dust often becomes the disappointment in our lives. The dust often becomes the setbacks that we experience. The dust often becomes the disappointments that we have. The dust often becomes the failed relationships that we go through. The dust often becomes the pain and suffering that we have. The dust often becomes the trauma that we experience through our lives. And by building up this dust, we get to a place that we've accumulated all this unnecessary things and for some of us we didn't even know it existed to begin with. My God. For some of us we never knew that if you pick up 
a little bit of the tab on our lives, you'll find that there's dust everywhere. It's there while we're pursuing our career. The dust is there. The dust is there while we are navigating through our marriages. The dust is there. The dust is there while we are building a brand new business. The dust is there. It's there while we are raising our children. The dust is there. It's there while we are establishing new relationships that we have. The dust is there. Listen to this, family. The issue, and don't miss this, the issue is not so much that the dust is there. Because the truth of the matter is, we're all going to be products at some point in our life's journey that are going to be impacted by our experiences. Mm -hmm. But the problem, and here it is, don't miss this. The problem is not that the dust is there. Right. The problem is we never took the time to clean it up. My God, Jesus. God doesn't have a problem with you having dust in your life. God has a problem with you always forgetting to clean up the dust. So the dust is there, but God says, you just are avoiding cleaning up your house. And family, in the text this morning, God does something very unusual. He sends a message to Hezekiah from a prophet. And the message that he tells him is he says, Hezekiah, you need to know right now that you have to get your house in order because you are about to die. In other words, what God is letting Hezekiah know is that you need to do a cleanup in your life. And this was an unprecedented moment in scripture because nowhere else can you find throughout the Bible where God conveyed a message to this level and to this degree. Where God sent a message that was specific about the time in which a person is going to expire from this life. But he sent this message because he wanted to let Hezekiah know that before you leave here, there's some cleaning up that has to take place in your house. There's some cleaning up that has to take place in your life. There is something that has to be done about your life right before you expire from this world. And family, this resonated with me because it was clear to me that Hezekiah had to be important to God because God took the time to send a specific message that told Hezekiah that he had to clean up his house before he died. And that is also what God desires and wants for us. He wants us to know that we have to clean up our lives so that we can be free from the things that the enemy is using to hold us back. Did you hear what I just said? God says you have to clean out your house so that you can be free of the things that the enemy is using to hold you back. That's what the Bible teaches us. And it says that we must set aside every sin that so easily beset us. In other words, God wants you to put the things that you have allowed to fester in your life aside. He wants you to clean them up. Why? Because they are going to set you back. He wants you to clean them up because they are preventing you from experiencing joy. He wants you to clean them out because they are keeping you from meeting your significant other. He wants you to clean them out because they are preventing you from being a person that experiences the success that is purposed for your life. 
God says that he wants you to clean it out. Because if you don't clean out your house, it's going to contaminate your life. And I believe that this is something that God wants us all to understand this morning. That a dirty house is a house that's not fertile ground. Did you hear what I just said? A dirty house is a house that's not fertile ground. What do I mean by that? If your house, which is your life, is full of dust, which are your issues, traumas, and circumstances, then that means that they're going to always suffocate purpose that God has for you. So you cannot grow beyond where you are if you continue to live in a house that has not been clean. Did you hear what I just said? You cannot reach your next level if you remain in a house that's not clean. And here it is, family. Too many of us have been walking over stuff that we know is there, but because we don't want to touch it, all it's doing is accumulating. I said to you, family, we had gathered stuff, and what baffles me is that this stuff that over time, it just built up. We didn't know that it was building up. All we kept doing was passing it up. Did you hear what I just said? So because we kept passing over it, it began to accumulate. What am I saying to you? Because there are some things that you have not addressed in your life, all what it's doing is collecting more issues. And it's compounding your life to the point where you won't be able to reach the level that God has for you. So God is saying to this morning, he's telling us that we have to clean out our house. We have to clean out our house. And family, I believe that Hezekiah already experienced the cleanup before this moment. Why do I say that? Because I believe that he had to have lived a life mm -hmm. that brought him to a place where God sent a specific word to him. Mm -hmm. So there must have been something in his life that predated this experience right. that helped us to understand that this was not the first time that Hezekiah had to clean out his house. So in other words, King Hezekiah, if you know who his story and his background story, the Bible teaches us that King Hezekiah was the son of a king named Ahaz. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible teaches us that Ahaz was an evil king. Mm -hmm. He was one of the most evilest kings that Judah ever had. Right. The Bible also taught us that he worshiped pagan gods. He performed pagan rituals. The Bible taught us that he Ahaz murdered innocent people all the time. In fact, Ahaz sacrificed his own children. And the Bible says that this king, who was Hezekiah's father, reigned over Judah for 20 years. So what does that mean, family? That means that Hezekiah was exposed to this environment for 20 years of his life. It means that Hezekiah was raised in this environment for 20 years of his life. Right. It means that Hezekiah was involved in what we consider to be a broken home. Mm. He was taught by someone who didn't understand the value of life. Right. He was raised in a toxic environment. Right. He was raised in an environment where he was emotionally and psychologically abused. But in spite of his environment, in spite of his experiences, Hezekiah did not allow any of that to interfere with his relationship with God. In other words, he did not allow the dust, which was his life story, to prevent him from being able to realize that he had to give his life to God. Did you hear what I just said? He did not allow the dust in his life to become an excuse that will keep him 
from surrendering his will to God. And what I want to say to you, family, is this. Too many of us have allowed the dust that we have accumulated by virtue of living to be an excuse why we can't do stuff. Well, God, you know, I'm not I, I'm not the most quick on my feet, so I can't start that business. Well, God, you know, I, I don't think I'm the most excellent test taker, so I can't go back to college. Well, God, you know, I, 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 I don't really know how to love people, so I don't think I should be in a relationship with anybody. We have allowed the dust that we have accumulated by virtue of living to become a stepping stone that has now been a hindrance from preventing us to receive what God has for us. And so many of you have allowed the dust to become a roadblock. But Hezekiah did not allow his life story to be an excuse that prevented him from keeping his eyes fixed on God. So what did he do? He purposed in his heart to clean out his house. He purposed in his heart to clean out his life in order for him to live according to God's plan and God's will. And here's what happened. As a consequence of him cleaning out his house, the Bible said that God prospered him. And here it is, family, don't miss this. Prosperity is not only limited to just wealth. Did you hear what I just said? Prosperity is not only limited to just wealth. The Bible says that God prospered him in battle over his enemies. The Bible said that God prospered him by giving him healing in his body. God prospered him by also adding value and time to his life. That's why the Bible said in 3 John chapter number 2 verse 2. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health even as your soul prosper. Right. Well, here it is. Don't miss this. The reason why we have to clean out our house family is because there are some things that God wants to bring into your life. Mm. Did you hear what I just said? The reason why you have to clean out your house is because there's some things that God wants to introduce to your life. And if you continue to walk around and live in an infested environment that's going to prevent you from experiencing the things that God wants for you, you will never be able to receive all that God purposed you to have. So you have to recognize the importance this morning of cleaning out your house. You have to recognize the importance this morning, family, of not allowing dust to remain unaddressed. You have to recognize the importance, family, of dealing with the pain, of dealing with the trauma, of dealing with the low self-esteem, of dealing with the depression. You have to recognize the importance of cleaning out your house Jesus. because if you don't right. all you do is create an environment that will be right for the enemy to bring destruction mm -hmm. into your life Jesus. so God is saying to you this morning you have to clean out your house you, so that God can move in you need to put that in the chat clean out my house so that God can move in. Listen to this family. Don't miss this. The depth at which you clean out your life. Is going to be consequential. To what God adds to your life. Did you hear what I just said? The depth at which you clean out your life. Is going to be consequential. To what God, God adds to your life. Now watch this. Don't miss this. If my family and I. Never took the time to clean out our house of all these useless things, right. of all these unnecessary things, of all these things that we deemed as garbage. Right. What was going to happen? Over time, it will build up. Right. 
over time, it will begin to absorb space in our home. And what's going to happen? We won't be able to introduce anything new into our house. So what am I saying to you? If God says the depth at which you clean out your house is going to be consequential for what he brings into your life, God is saying the more effort you put into strengthening yourself, the more effort you put in getting delivered from your anger, getting delivered and healed from your past traumas, getting set free of, of your financial hardship, being a person who's looking at your life and examining where you are and saying, I can't stay here another year. I can't be in this situation another year. The better you deal with those issues, the more God can bring into your life. But the more you overlook them, the more it's going to build up in your life. So God brought prosperity into King Hezekiah's life, not because of what he went through in his past, but because at some point in his life journey, Hezekiah chose to clean his house up. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. And what you need to know this before me this morning, family, is this. Your decision to clean up your life right. is a choice you have to make. Mm. Your decision to clean up your life is a choice that you have to make. Mm. Hezekiah made the choice before that moment. And, but he chose to clean up his life so that he could have a relationship with God. And what I want to say to you, family, this morning is this. Don't assume that because you went through a trying time in your life, that God owes you something. Did you hear what I just said? Don't assume that because you went through a difficult season in your life, that God owes you something. There are some things that God will bring into our lives as a result of what we did. Did you hear what I just said? There are some things that God will allow to introduce into your life as a result of the decisions and choices that you make. That is called reaping what you sow. That's why the Bible reminds us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's why the Bible also reminds us that faith without works is dead. So family, it is illogical for you to think that you're going to have a great year when the truth of the matter is you still have all the same dust and issues in your life that has been preventing you from having good years prior to that. My God. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus. So, so in other words, if you want to have a better year, there's something new that has to take place in your life. If we want to be able to get new things into our home, then that means that we got to get rid of all the stuff that's taking up space. Right. If you want to experience a new level of breakthrough, a new level of healing, a new level of deliverance, a new level of financial freedom, mm -hmm. the question is this morning, what are you doing differently right. to get the results that you're looking for? In other words... Have you convinced yourself that you don't have any dust in your life that you need to deal with? Have you convinced yourself that you don't have any issues in your life that need to be addressed? Have you convinced yourself that there's some trauma in your life that doesn't really exist? Because the truth of the matter is, family, the longer you remain in a state of denial, right. the easier it is for the enemy to take advantage of you. And listen to this, don't miss this. It's going to always be easy for the enemy to take advantage of people who are ignorant. The word ignorant means to not know. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be easier for him to take advantage of people who choose to not know right. than it is for people who say, God, I have an issue, but I need you to help me through it. Right. And what you need to know, family, this morning is... The quicker you recognize that your dust, whatever it is, is the problem that's keeping you from reaching that next level, right. 
the quicker you can find yourself on the road towards recovery. Because God wants you to know the longer you keep stepping over the dust that's there, I want you to know stepping over it doesn't mean that it went away. It is only through you addressing it that you're able to deal with it so that God can bring you over it. And what that means is, that means you have to learn how to surrender to God so that he can heal you of the things in your life that the enemy is plaguing you with. And that's why God said this morning, you have to clean out your house. Mm -hmm. You have to clean out your house. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Don't miss this. The full benefits of God's kingdom can only be realized when you recognize that a clean house is going to be conducive for you to get what you've been asking God for. So if you don't clean out your house, what you've been asking God for, for is going to fall on ground that won't germinate. It's going to fall on ground that won't allow it to grow. Why? Because all you're doing is suffocating the seeds that God is planting. Mm. So God is saying this morning, you need to clean out your house so that I can bring you in to better. So that I can bring you in to where I want you to be. And when I saw Hezekiah experience, one of the things I thought about to myself, I said, well, you know what, God? What is it about Hezekiah's life that caused him to get here? I thought about, well, maybe he did something. And then I said, well, if he did something, that caused him to be on death's door. I said, well, okay, what could he have done? What could he have done for him to be at the place where he's right now? The Bible said that he was inflicted. The Bible said that he was he was bedridden. So in other words, he was at a low of a low place. And in that moment, it would be very, to, very easy to assume that God was through with him. It would be very easy to assume that God didn't have his hand on Hezekiah's life anymore. That, that, that would be evident. If you told me you just in that moment you believed that God didn't have his hand on his life, I would say to you that you probably telling me the truth. Because Hezekiah was gravely ill. He was the, at the point where he was about to die. It also said that his entire kingdom was under attack by his enemies. And so watch this. Not only is he bedridden, not only is he not able to rule, but his entire kingdom is also under siege. In fact, the Bible says that God told him that he would not recover. The Bible says that Isaiah told him, and here the Bible says, he said, put your house in order. Because you're going to die and will not recover. Could you imagine the mental and emotional state that Hezekiah was in at that point in time? Right. Hearing that the God you serve told you, hang up the towel. Mm. Told you that this is it. Told you that there's no coming back from this. Could you imagine receiving a word like that? And family, I want to say this to you because I've learned this myself. I've discovered that there are some things and times in our lives that the answer that God sends us for challenging to us are not going to always be the answers that we want to hear. Right. Did you hear what I just said? Right. Sometimes the answers to the questions that we've been asking God are not going to always be the answers that we want to hear. Sometimes the solutions that we're going to have to our issues, God is going to say it needs to be a radical solution. Sometimes the solutions that we're going to experience are not going to make sense to us at points in our lives. Sometimes the solutions that we're going to go through 
are going to be things that are going to make us uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the solution that God is going to give us is going to go right up against what we call our comfort zones. Mm -hmm. And that's why, family, it's important to have a relationship with God yes. that is not a superficial relationship. Did you hear what I just said? Right. You can't afford to have a superficial relationship with God. Why? Right. Because sometimes the answers that he's going to give you may be the very thing that hurts your feelings. Mm -hmm. My God. Hezekiah served God. You read it in the text. He told God, God, I served you. I lived up right before you. But here he is on his deathbed expecting to get a response from God that is going to encourage him. But what he does, he gets a response from a prophet that God says, you are about to die and you won't recover from this situation. I don't know about you, family, but I want you to know if that was me, my feelings would have been hurt. And here Hezekiah is in this very moment getting his feelings hurt because he did not get the answer that he was expecting. But here in his family, when you have a relationship with God, when you have a relationship with God, one word of offense doesn't shift your entire posture or attitude. When you have a relationship with God, one word that doesn't fully get you to the place where you understand what's happening, one word is not going to shift you into a bad mood. When you have a relationship with God, not hearing the answer you expected is not going to make you believe that you don't serve a God who can do all things but fair. When you have a relationship with God, one word you hear that doesn't make you feel good doesn't cause you to turn your back on God. Those of us who are in a relationship with God understand that when we say, God, order my steps, it doesn't mean that I'll drive myself to my final destination. When you say, God, order my step, it doesn't mean, God, I'll drive and you sit on the sideline. Right. When you say, God, order my steps, you know that you're telling God, God, I can't do it without you. Right. God, I can't make it without you. God, if it can be done, it can only be done through you. Right. When you say, God, order my steps, you understand you're also saying, God, I'm ready to clean out my house. Right. So that you can move in. Right. There's no problem in your life that God can't handle. Right. There's no dust in your life that God can't clean out. Mm -hmm. There's no trauma in your childhood that God can't heal you from. Mm -hmm. There's no pain that you have experienced that God can't bring you through. But if we don't recognize the importance of cleaning out our house, then we'll always remain at a place of stagnation. Right. Hezekiah noticed and recognized the importance of surrendering everything to God. Right. And so notice how he responded. Hezekiah didn't abandon hope. Hezekiah didn't throw in the towel while he was on his deathbed. He didn't roll over and give up on himself. He didn't believe that God could not bring him through. Instead, the Bible said that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and began to pray. And family, I want you to know this morning that Hezekiah's actions are symbolic of what we need to do in terms of cleaning out our house. Hezekiah turning to the wall and praying represented what we need to do as kingdom citizens in terms of our responses to when we come across issues in our lives that need to be cleaned out. Hezekiah recognized that it is through prayer 
that I need to get rid of these unclean things. It is through prayer and reading of God's word that you can get rid of all those issues and those pains that you have in your life. It is through prayer and supplication that God can clean you of everything that has been plaguing you. And Hezekiah recognized that prayer is what he needs to do. Too often, family, the reason why we're so overwhelmed by the issues or the pressures of life is because we've allowed the dust to settle and now the dust is blocking and impeding our progress. So Hezekiah shows us that the right response which is praying and believing God will produce the right outcome. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, verse 14, it says this, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Hezekiah understood that even though he was on death's doorstep, even though he was at the end of his rope, he knew that prayer was still the answer. God didn't give up on Hezekiah. God used Hezekiah's deathbed to be a stepping stone for him to go to a next level. In other words, God used Hezekiah's situations as the Mr. Clean in his life to help him clean out all the things that he allowed to fester right in that moment. And what I want to say to you, family, is this. Some of you don't realize what you're going through right now is all God doing to get your house clean. Some of you need to be in the situations you're in right now. Why? Because God knows how to turn your pain into purpose. God knows know how to turn your disappointment into a disinfectant that will clean your life out so you can get on track. So stop fighting God and start recognizing that, yeah, my life needs to be cleaned out. Because there's some things that I've left there mm -hmm. and have never dealt with. My God. And now mm -hmm. they're dealing with me. My God. So one of the key ingredients is family mm -hmm. for cleaning out your house is to have a prayer life. Yes, God. Have a prayer life. Hezekiah prayed because he knew that if there was anything that would get God's attention, it was going to be his prayer. He knew that if there's one thing that I need in this moment, is to call on God so he can bring me through. And family, this morning, I want you to know your prayer life is key towards you cleaning out your house. Because when you clean out your house, now God will be able to unlock the doors of the kingdom in your life. So Hezekiah prayed. And the Bible says that after he prayed, the Bible says that God added 15 more years to his life. I want you to know, family, this morning, that was equivalent to God adding more to his life. Right. So what am I saying to you, family, this morning is this. When you take the time to seek God right. and apply the principles and precepts of Scripture to your life, right. God will then now disinfect your life and clean it out. Right. And as he cleans out your life, what's going to happen? He's going to add increase into your life. So here it is, Hezekiah prayed, and what did do? What did God do? God added. So when he prayed, God subtracted death and brought on increase. Did you hear what I just said? And what I'm saying to you, family, is this. When you clean out your house, what you're doing 
is you are subtracting negativity. Yes. You are subtracting death. Yes. You are subtracting failure. You are subtracting disappointment. Yes. You are subtracting anger. Yes. You are subtracting trauma out yes. your life. Yes. And God is not going to add more, more to who you are. Thank you, Lord. But when you pray, you got to make sure that you're praying for God yes. to clean it out. The next thing I need you to know, family, is that Hezekiah was intentional about his prayer. See, we opened this morning with our text scripture. And it says that what did Hezekiah do? Hezekiah reminded God, God, I served you. God, I lived for you. God, I did your will. He was intentional about his prayer. And the Bible teaches us that Hezekiah was one of Judah's most God-fearing kings. He showed the people the importance of serving God. The Bible describes Hezekiah as a king who had a close relationship with God. One who did what God wanted him to do. One who the Bible says was a good and right and faithful servant of God. He was a king who destroyed all the pagan gods that his father built. All the pagan gods in the temples that his father erected. So Hezekiah lived a life that was intentionally set on serving God. He was a king who reigned as a child of God. He understood the importance of keeping God first in everything that he did. Right. And what I want to say to you, family, this morning is Hezekiah's intentionality was no accident. What are you talking about, Pastor? He made sure that he did not want to continue the legacy that his father had. So he decided that the moment I take over reign of Judah, I'm going to make some changes. And what am I saying to you, family, is this. Like I told you, we had intentions to do what we call a big cleanup. Right. It was a prescribed, dedicated time in our calendar and in our schedule right. to clean our house from top to bottom. Yep. And so it was no accident. It was intentional. Right. And what I'm saying to you, family, is this. As you look to bring God into your life, you have to be intentional about your relationship with God. You have to be intentional about cleaning out your house. You have to be intentional about applying the precepts of God's word to your life. Because the truth of the matter is, if you don't intentionally set out to achieve the goal, you're going to get sidetracked in the process. And Hezekiah was intentional about making sure that his kingdom was a different kingdom than his father. Right. So because of that, God brought revival to Judah. He brought prosperity to Judah for decades simply because they lived for him. So it was clear that he lived an intentional life. An intentional life that was set out to be pleasing in God's eyes. Right. This morning I want to know, have you been intentional about cleaning up your life? My God. Have you been intentional about dealing with your past? Have you been intentional about dealing with your poor stewardness over finance? Have you been intentional about dealing with the childhood trauma that you have? Have you been intentional about building a stronger marriage? 
Have you been intentional about building a relationship with your parents? Have you been intentional about fulfilling your dreams? Because the truth is, family, unless you get serious about it, it's going to just remain something that you walk over, just like the dust in your life. God said this morning, you cannot go another year. You cannot go another season of your life. Not dealing and being intentional about addressing the things that you have left unclean in your life. Because you don't realize that the enemy is using it as a weapon against you. So every time you are on the brink of achieving something great, what happens? You have a relapse. Every time you are in the middle of stepping out and doing something big, what happens? You simply fall into a state of depression and low self-esteem. All of it's tied to all the dust that you keep sweeping under the carpet thinking that it's not building up. And God said this morning, you need to flip that carpet over and you need to get a garbage bag and you need to clean out your life of all the things that have been there. Because in order for you to reach your next level, You can't get there holding on to all that garbage. You can't get there holding on to all those useless things. You can't get there holding on to all that unnecessary hurt and pain that you continue to allow to go unaddressed. So God says, yes, you have to clean out your house in order for you to realize your full potential. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, God is saying that we need to make sure that we are intentional about our relationship with him and we are intentional about cleaning out our house. And family, I discover that when we move and operate with intentionality concerning the things of God or what God is planning to do in our lives, God will not only prosper us, but he'll ensure that we come out victorious in every battle of our lives. Why? Because we are intentional about seeking him. And what did he say? If you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. God is saying this morning to you, family, you have to clean out your house today. You have to clean out your house. And only you know what you have lingering in your house that you've never addressed. And listen, sometimes cleaning out your house is something that's so difficult, you can't do it by yourself. So what happened? It took three of us to stop the process of our fall cleanup. And here's the amazing thing. The amazing thing is, even though we started it, we still didn't finish everything. We still have some things left to do. But here it is, don't miss this. We still started. What I want to say to you, family, this morning is, If you really and truly want to start living your best life, 
if you really and truly want to start to experience what we dubbed at the beginning of this year as the more, if we really want to start to live as the great prophet Donald Laura said, on top of the world, you need to recognize that a clean house is going to be the key to getting it. Right. Hezekiah was imperfect. Hezekiah was not devoid of mistakes. But one thing Hezekiah did that's a principle we all need to have is that Hezekiah recognized that his life required some cleaning up. And I want to say to you this morning, the message today wasn't intended to be deep. I opened with a parallel to cleaning out my house. But I want to say to you, family, this morning that God wants you to know you have to start cleaning out your house today. You have to start cleaning out your house today. Today is the day that God says, open those closets in your life. Open those windows in your life. Pull up that carpet in your life. Surrender that pain to Him. Surrender that trauma to Him. Surrender that bitterness to Him. Surrender that low self-esteem to Him. Surrender that hatred that you have to Him. God said this morning, there is a cleanup that needs to be done on you that can only be done by Him. But He wants you to know, the sooner you start this cleanup, the faster you will start to see productivity. Hi, my name is Tobias Hall. I have the honor of serving as the lead pastor of a brand new church plant on Long Island called the Fellowship Center. We are a multicultural, multi-generational, and multi-ethnic ministry that has the pleasure of serving the Baldwin Long Island community. You know, we started our ministry uh, just a year ago, and in that time, God has done some extraordinary things through us. We've been able to uh, feed the homeless. We've been able to provide clothing to children in need. We've been able to supply back to school supplies for children. It has been an extraordinary journey here at the Fellowship Center. Our core values are very simple. We believe that every life touched is a life change and every life change can and will empower a nation. And so we're grateful to have the opportunity to serve this community in this capacity. And we know that God is really just getting started with our ministry. There's so much more that we can do and we look forward to the opportunity of serving God's people in the years to come. God bless.